Y'all ready to talk about some gay shit? Call Me By Your Name is, I believe, the third movie by Luca Guadagnino following I Am Love and The Bigger Splash, the latter of which I've seen and liked it okay. I thought A Bigger Splash was beautifully shot and it was very well acted, but it was a little too directionless and subtle to really be clear to me what was going on and what it was going for the first time I saw it, which was the only time I saw it. It was all just a bit too understated for its story to be more emotionally effective for me, and I ended up appreciating it more as a pseudo-experimental semi-erotic exercise in a in film rather than as a movie with a story. So I genuinely did not know what to expect going into this one. When it first premiered, the acclaim didn't surprise me because it was mainly coming from fans of Guadagnino who were just happy he made another movie the way he likes to make them. Uh, but then time went on and more people saw it and the acclaim kept coming and coming and it took it all the way to Oscar season and the movie came out I mean, it premiered over a year ago. And this is definitely a much more accessible film than A Bigger Splash, I think, and it's also a much, much better film than A Bigger Splash. And it's also, at least so far, probably my favorite movie of the year. This film is also very subtle and under understated, um, but it uses those subtleties to really fantastic effect, uh, to tell its story, and more importantly, to flesh out its characters. So the movie follows the 17-year-old Elio, played by Timothy Chalamet, who is on vacation with his sort of academic parents in 1980s Italy, uh, and he falls in love with a graduate student uh, staying with them, played by Army Hammer. And without giving too much away, I think the most remarkable thing about the movie's story and how it plays out and what sets it apart and makes it more interesting than most coming-of-age movies and most romantic movies, both straight romances and especially gay romances, is that there's really nothing in the plot where any conflict precipitates from some sort of outside resistance to the main character's relationship, if that makes any sense. There's no real societal constraints. It's 80, 19, 1980s Italy, and it's not really a big problem that they're together. There's no homophobic parents, there's no perceptions or notions or depictions of abuse, or one of them preying on or taking advantage of the other. There's actually very little outright conflict at all. Uh, the only real outside negative force for the protagonist is the passage of time. The film doesn't really concern itself. Um, with these things, and instead focuses on just portraying and exploring the feelings and the interactions of these two characters through all kinds of subtle things. Uh, body language, and short conversations, scenes of riding bikes, reading books, when, you know, dancing wordlessly, kissing, and, you know, just small, almost nothing happening. Uh, these small moments that string together and make a very complex and compelling and emotionally resonant portrait of a moment in time for a young person. Uh, a moment of growth and an increased understanding of what love is and what attraction is. And you'd think that a movie with essentially no central conflict um, would get boring or stupid eventually, but the effectiveness of these strong, strung together uh, subtle small moments comes from how beautifully realized they are, uh, thanks to a number of things. First, and probably foremost is the cast. The film has a very small cast of mostly relatively unknowns, and certainly no major, like, A-list actors. Its supporting cast is small, and the tertiary characters get pretty limited screen time, but there's not really a single performance that isn't well done. And especially when we're going supporting characters, Michael Stuhlbarg really knocks it out of the park as Elio's dad. Uh, especially in a monologue scene toward the very tail end of the movie that I'm sure you've heard about by now. Timothy Chalamet and Army Hammer give career best performances, uh, keeping in mind that Chalamet is really just now breaking onto the scene, he's only 22, and I wanted to give particular attention to Chalamet because he really, in my opinion, 
gives the performance of the fucking year in this movie, and I mean that sincerely. His ability to communicate very specific and very nuanced emotion through just eye movement and facial expressions and little vocal inflections and especially his posture and his movements and body language uh, makes Ilio not just a well-rounded and three-dimensional character, um, but really makes him feel like an honest, living, breathing person. His performance is so down-to-earth and honest and layered, um, and whenever it's just him or just him and Army on screen, you really just get lost in their world just because of how natural and watchable their performances are. Luca Guadagnino's direction is also a very key element uh, to these characters being so great and well wrought. The necessary companion to great, subtle, and nuanced acting to tell a story this way, using strung together short interactions to build your characters and their feelings, rather than simply emphasizing a sequence of events shown in an order, is to have direction that properly draws attention to the right details uh, and the right nuances of those performances in the right order to make these things make sense and to get these points across subtly but effectively, and Guadagnino pulls that off incredibly well. I especially really like an element of his direction where he likes to let the camera linger on characters in their moments of silent emotion, so you can just watch their face contort and change slightly, and you really feel their feelings in real time with them. That's a thing I like seeing in movies, and there's a good bit of it here, again, including at the very end, in a portion of the movie that I'm sure if you've read anything about the things people like about this movie, you've probably heard about it. Also relevant to this movie being a great pleasure to watch is the beautiful camera work done by a cinematographer whose name I am not going to try to pronounce. Summertime Italy is a pretty ripe place for pretty imagery, uh, and he really milks it for all of its use in this movie. The movie looks so lush and sensual and textured, and every character looks so sexy. I saw this movie at the beginning of January and it was like 15 degrees outside, but in the theater you just feel its breezy, summery warmth. It's such like a tactile movie to watch. You can almost taste the fruit they eat and you can feel the wetness when they're in the pool or the ocean. It's just so nice. I don't know what it is about the photography in the movie that makes me feel that. And then to top it all off, you have Sufjan Stevens with a great set of nice, relaxing, quiet songs, most notably the now Oscar-nominated uh, Mystery of Love, which is a really gorgeous, melancholy sort of summer love ballad, and, and Sufjan's sort of trademark whisper-light singing voice uh, and his tone match the, again, the melancholy and the sweetness of this movie pretty perfectly. All in all, I can't really find enough superlatives for Call Me By Your Name. It really is, to me, just a top-to-bottom, fantastically well-made movie. I really profoundly enjoyed watching this movie play out, uh, and I'm really excited to watch it again when it comes out on Blu-ray. It's amazingly well-acted, it's perfectly directed, beautifully filmed, has very pretty music, and manages to be an emotionally effective and smart coming-of-age romance film that builds its characters and its story through subtle interactions and moments uh, to paint a really like poignant picture of this fleeting emotional moment in someone's transition from youth to adulthood. In a weird way, I kind of find it to be a good companion piece to Lady Bird in some ways, uh, if for no other reason that they both really adeptly capture that age 17-18 moment of transition between child and young adult, Lady Bird more from a familial angle and this film from more a sexual and romantic angle. All that said, I cannot recommend Call Me By Your Name enough. Uh, I really can't think of a single problem I have with it. Uh, and while I, I have some others to catch up on, it, it might just be my favorite movie that I saw all last year. Um, and 
I'm going all in on this one. I'm giving Call Me By Your Name a 10 out of 10. It's good stuff. I really, really recommend watching that movie whenever you can. Uh, I wish it was nominated for so many more Oscars. I'm so mad that it's not going to win, um, except for screenplay. It'll win an adapted screenplay, probably. But that is that. If you saw Call Me By Your Name, let me know what you thought of it. And uh, hopefully be coming at you with another movie review, catching up on stuff. And I'm trying to see movies from last year, like in my free time before the Oscars, and it's really just not going well. So, uh, but yeah, bye.